Given the vast amount of information that can now be accessed with a single click of a mouse, it seems that human knowledge has reached an unprecedented peak. And in fact, with the help of the sources available to us these days, it's easily possible for us to constantly expand our own horizons. However, there have also been some mysterious incidents in past eras, though these occurrences are rarely ever spoken of these days and they remain largely unexplained. Today, we'd like to take a look at some of the most enigmatic and disturbing chapters in human history. Prepare for secret documents, forbidden love affairs, and some of the most terrifying experiments ever. But before we jump into it, be sure to hit that like button and ring the notification bell for more videos. Also, stick around for number two to learn about something you've probably never heard of before. Vatican Secret Archives what words did Marie Antoinette say to Pope Pius VI shortly before her execution? What exactly was in the document that banned Martin Luther from the church? And what crimes have members of the Catholic faith community been guilty of over the past centuries? The answers to these gripping historical questions lie dormant in the secret archives of the Vatican. The Catholic Church keeps a careful watch over 1,200 documents in the dark, concrete, reinforced vault, some of which are never to be made public. This mysterious collection comprises around 15 million pages and contains many documents that stain the allegedly clean slate of the church with innumerable eyesores. For example, the donation of Constantine, one of the most brazen lies in history. The forged document was created around 800 AD and retrospectively awarded a large part of the Roman Empire to Pope Sylvester I and his successors. For many centuries, the Pope's official claims to power were based on this deception. The very existence of the Vatican secret archive was kept top secret for a long period of time. Later, only a few historians were allowed to rummage through the legendary documents. At least some files have now been made available for general research purposes. However, for the most part, we have no idea what may be hidden in these archives. There have been rumors that some of the documents stored at the Vatican could change human history forever. Some have suggested that ancient artifacts that belong to Jesus Christ are stored in the Vatican. Well, this is almost certainly true. There have also been more far-fetched rumors that claim some of the items that were looted from ancient Egypt could be stored in the Vatican as well. While there isn't much evidence to suggest this, it would certainly be plausible. Dozens of other rumors claim that the Vatican has access to all sorts of hidden ancient knowledge that has since been lost to the steady march of time. Though without complete access to the archives, we'll likely never know for sure what could be stored inside. JFK Files the assassination attempt on John F. Kennedy put not only the United States, but practically the entire Western world into a state of paralysis. However, shortly after the President of the United States was shot dead in the street on November 22, 1963, the first voices began to cast doubts about the official account of the events. The commission responsible at the time came to the conclusion that Lee Harvey Oswald had planned and carried out the ambush entirely on his own. Oswald himself, on the other hand, declared his innocence and saw himself as the victim of a large-scale state plot. The alleged presidential killer was ultimately shot dead by Jack Ruby when he was about to be transferred to Dallas State Prison. The so-called JFK files could help to reveal the true background of the terrible attack. The problem is, the files dealing with the Kennedy assassination are largely kept under lock and key. Only a few key documents have been revealed over the years, with large portions of these documents being redacted. 
Several inconsistencies between the official account and some eyewitness accounts give rise to the most controversial conspiracy theories that exist today. For example, some Americans believe that the president's assassination was in fact planned by the CIA. In addition, quite a few people consider it simply impossible that Lee Harvey Oswald is said to have carried out the act alone. Before Donald Trump decided a few years ago to publish at least some parts of the JFK files, his advisors advised him to have the relevant files revised beforehand and to keep certain passages secret. Still today, all these years later, the details of Kennedy's assassination are largely unknown. There would have been a plethora of reasons for Kennedy to have been hunted down, as well as a large number of people who would have wanted to see him dead. Though without these documents being revealed, we may never know the true reason behind the loss of Kennedy's life. The Assyrian Queen the story of Samuramat, an Assyrian queen, gives rise to wild speculation. Historians assume that the wife of the powerful ruler, Shamshi Adad V, had an even greater influence on the politics of the Assyrian Empire than the king himself. Samuramat is said to have obtained sole control over the state in the ancient Orient for a few years. And this would have been at a time when the idea of a woman being a powerful leader would have been unheard of. Therefore, the experts argued to this day about whether Samuramat really appeared as the sole ruler of a kingdom, or if she would have been in charge of the finances of said kingdom. What is certain is that a cult surrounding Samuramat soon developed. The ruler, venerated by the population, became the subject of countless tales and legends, from which the figure of Semiramis emerged. This figure, in turn, was said to have had unearthly beauty and extraordinary intelligence. By the time the queen's son came of age and finally ascended the throne of the Assyrian Empire, Samuramat is said to have reached several notable milestones. According to this, the ruler succeeded in stabilizing the country and brought it back from a terrible state, even going as far as repelling attacks by hostile nations and conquering the center of power of the Arameans. How and why Samuramat finally died is unknown. Also, how she managed to rise to be a supernatural and legendary leader within the broader population still remains a mystery. Sally Hemings and Thomas Jefferson how were Sally Hemings and Thomas Jefferson related to each other? Hemings was originally the slave of Martha Wales, Jefferson's wife. After the wife of the future U.S. president died, Thomas Jefferson is said to have entered into a love affair with his subordinate. The first rumors quickly arose about a child of the politician and this supposed slave girl. A later inquiry discovered a hidden chamber in the Jefferson estate that could have served as the birthplace of the illegitimate children. DNA analysis carried out in the 1990s finally revealed that one of Sally Hemings' children was undoubtedly descended from Thomas Jefferson. It therefore seems reasonable to conclude that the leader of the state was indeed the father of Sally's children. This is also supported by the fact that Jefferson released Sally's children from slavery, but kept the rest of his slaves in captivity. Another version of this story is based on the fact that it was not Thomas Jefferson, but his brother who had entered into a forbidden love affair with a slave. But even if the future president of the United States was actually the father of Sally Hemings' children, it's unclear how the two really connected. In addition to the idea that the relationship between the two was truly based on mutual love, there's also the version in which Jefferson practically forced the much younger Sally to have the affair. How many children the two are supposed to have conceived is also an unsolved mystery. The number of presumed offspring varies between four and six. Even all these years later, we don't know for sure if Thomas Jefferson was simply a man who fell in love with one of his slaves, or if he was a savage monster who forced his female slaves against their will in the vilest ways possible. Whatever the truth may be, we'll likely never know for sure. Unit 731 
During its existence, Unit 731 conducted some of the most terrifying human experiments in history. In detail, it was a secret facility of the Japanese Army, which operated in the then-occupied Manchuria in the 1930s and 1940s. It's considered a fact that the members of Unit 731 committed innumerable atrocities against the population living there. One of the terrible activities carried out by the secret facility was the use of plague bacteria. The effects of grenades on people were also tested as part of these primal experiments. In addition, the involuntary subjects were exposed to hypothermia experiments, biological weapons, and deliberately induced anthrax epidemics. It's believed at least 3,500 people were killed as a result of these atrocities. After the end of the Second World War in 1945, the victorious occupiers destroyed some of the production facilities of Unit 731. However, rats infected with plague were accidentally released in the process, which in some Chinese provinces caused a devastating epidemic with more than 20,000 deaths. The secret organization probably had up to 3,000 members. Some of the lower-ranking officials who didn't manage to flee to Japan in time after the war ended were then brought to justice. Instead of condemning the atrocities of the inhuman unit and turning away from the horrific experiments carried out, the USA and the Soviet Union took a complete completely different path. In fact, the United States acquired Unit 731's research to use it in developing its own biological weapons. During the Cold War, the Soviets also benefited from reports from Soviet prisoners who'd come under the control of Unit 731 at the time. The Japanese government tried to cover up the crimes of the secret organization for many decades. It wasn't until 2002 when the Tokyo District Court first publicly acknowledged that Unit 731 one and the crimes it had committed did truly take place. The victims were not compensated regardless of this revelation, and it's uncertain what types of cruel experiments would have been carried out aside from the documented cases that we know of today. Stanford Prison Experiment what began as a simple experiment eventually culminated in one of the greatest controversies of the 1970s. The so-called Stanford Prison Experiment pursued the goal of tearing 24 students out of their normal everyday lives and exposing them to the rigors of a prison situation that was true to what a normal prisoner would experience in America. It was decided by tossing a coin which participants would take on the role of guards and which ones would take on the role of prisoners. In order to make the framework as authentic as possible, the selected subjects were arrested by real police officers in the run-up to the experiment and then transferred to the makeshift prison in the basement of Stanford University. The guards had a generous amount of leeway in carrying out the experiment. They were free to set up their own rules and take whatever measures were necessary to maintain order. The prisoners were then wrapped in short hospital gowns, and three of them were eventually locked in narrow cells that didn't even have a toilet. Anyone who wanted to quit the experiment needed the permission of a guard. In addition, the prisoners were no longer addressed by their names, but only with the numbers assigned to them. It wasn't long before the experiment got completely out of control. The guards used fire extinguishers to suppress a prisoner riot. From then on, inmates were no longer allowed to go to the toilet on their own. Instead, they had to relieve themselves in buckets. The prisoners' clothes and beds were also taken away. As the guards' sadistic behavior became more and more extreme, and some inmates could no longer withstand the immense stress, the Stanford prison experiment had to be stopped after just six days. Originally, a duration of two weeks was planned. While most prisons these days are kept under much tighter surveillance, these projects only prove that when left to their own devices, prison guards can become wildly out of control and will eventually abuse the prisoners they're sworn to protect and guard. 
If guards are capable of doing such a thing in a controlled environment, just imagine what they may be capable of behind closed doors, especially in the years before technology and CCTV would have helped to keep a close eye on them. Many people may believe that when you're sentenced to prison, you give up all your rights and deserve whatever punishment is handed to you behind bars. However, we have to remember that while prisoners may have broken the law, they're still human and still deserve to be treated fairly, all things considered. What's your opinion on the cases we covered today? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Also, if you like this video, be sure to hit that like button and ring the notification bell for more videos.